Artists, today we are going to be adding a horizon line and a middle ground to our landscape. We're going to start with our large piece of white paper and we are going to fold it in half the long ways to give ourselves a guideline. And then we are going to open it back up and fold the bottom half up one more time. We're folding the bottom half up to match that middle fold. We're going to use these two folds as a guideline for our project. If we take a look at the background that we created, we have two folds that I want you to think about. We're going to be doing a horizon line along the bottom fold we are going to be drawing above that horizon line. And our goal is to not draw too far above that top fold because we want a lot of our sky and background to be able to show through. So I'm going to start with my horizon line and I'm going to lightly draw in pencil right across that bottom fold line. It doesn't have to follow that line completely. And I'm going to start thinking about what do I want in my background um, to show and what do I want in my middle ground to show. So I'm going to think about what type of a landscape I have. Um, do I have a landscape with mountains? Um, do I have a landscape that has trees? Um, I'm going to do some just real simple kind of mountain shapes. Remember, we don't want to go too far above that second fold for my landscape. And I'm going to add some shadow to these mountains. And a real easy way to add shadow is to start at the peak and to kind of do a zigzag line that goes down. I'm starting at the peak, zigzag line that goes down. Starting at the peak, zigzag line that goes down, starting at the peak, zigzag line that goes down. I'm going to use this horizon line to help me when I'm doing my drawing and cutting. Remember that we are making up our own landscape. We're making up any type of a landscape we might have seen. So I'm going to give mine maybe a little bit of a futuristic look. I'm going to have some just spheres that are just kind of hanging out in my landscape because a perfectly round sphere isn't really something that I normally see in a landscape. My horizon line would be erased there. And because I started doing shadow lines on the left side of the mountains, any other shadow lines that I create need to be on the left side of things as well. So in my imaginary landscape, I've got just some random spheres kind of hanging out. And when I add some shading with my Sharpie, I think that those random spheres will look a little bit more 3D. If any of my spheres are being drawn over top of the horizon line, I need to make sure that the horizon line is erased um, so that it creates overlap. I think I'm going to draw one more sphere here. So now what I've got is a just kind of a baseline for my um, horizon line and middle ground. Now that I am done drawing or sketching out, I am going to go back in and trace all of my pencil lines with Sharpie. I'm going to be real careful that if I have every, anything that is over top of or overlapping my horizon line, that that horizon line is not drawn through those objects. Now that I have my landscape traced in Sharpie, I can go back in and I can just use some lines or cross hatching to show my shadows. So all I need to do is two different directions of line that are crossing over one another. That is going to create cross hatching or a shadowed effect. So I started with those lines that were diagonal facing one direction. And now these ones are over top of the first lines in the opposite direction. 
And you can see that that simple cross hatching is giving us shadow. The most important thing to remember when you are creating shadow is that you have to have a light source and wherever your light source is coming from, your shadows have to follow that same rule. Because all of my shadows are on the left side of things that I'm drawing right now, that means that my light source is going to be somewhere over here on the right hand side. You have to make sure that your shadows follow those rules. Um, if I had shadows on the left and the right of my mountains, it wouldn't look as realistic. So once again, cross-hatching is just lines that are in opposite direction that kind of cross over one another. I'm going to clean up this line a bit by just darkening that up. When I get to my circles, I can do the same thing. But instead of doing straight lines that are cross-hatched, I would want to maybe go on more of a curved line. My shadows that are underneath once again can be cross-hatched. So instead of straight cross-hatching lines, I'm doing more curved ones. It's helping my sphere look more three-dimensional. And once again, because my shadows are on the left side of my mountain, my shadows on the spheres need to be on the left side as well. Once you're finished adding shadow and depth to your landscape's horizon line and middle ground, you can go back in and erase any pencil lines that you still might see.